Right. Uh, I, I I did this in my 2022 prediction series. Like, I actually really hate talking about security. Right. Because well, I didn't feel get like in... a trap sometimes. Well, because right? well, I didn't get into technology because I like want to protect people from criminals. I got into technology because I like thought it was think it's cool and I think we can do cool stuff with it and we can like grow businesses and make more money and communicate better and like and bad guys on the internet have gotten way smart and they've decided that they're going to make money by being essentially a tax on the business. I don't like this space. I don't want to go to customers. I don't want to ask for their money to sell them security stuff because it doesn't make their lives better. It just makes sure it doesn't get worse. So, So I want to admit, I don't like this space. But I also, you know, live in the real world. <laughs> and so, so I know, like, we've got to have actual conversations about it. So if you ask me, like, the number one thing about this is I actually think that we're not generally treating this like the thing that it is. I always like to say, like, if you, if you took cyber security and you made it all physical, we'd be having a very different conversation. Gangs of criminals would be roving the streets, breaking into businesses left and right using weapons, because we can agree that ransomware is a weapon, right? Imagine that world, like imagine that physical world where all of these incidents were now happening. It's the zombie apocalypse. It's so, it's worse than like, it's yeah. so bad. Right? Yeah, like right, every, right. It's horrific. It would be the only thing we would be talking about besides maybe coronavirus, right? Like it'd be like literally because because it's just two threats of like of massive scale. But that's not the conversation we're having. And by the way, the the opposing side, the criminals, are are not like they are they're not disorganized. They are impressively run business organizations. They are they are really good at what they do. I think that's a common thing theme that I see as people uh thinking about the threat as though it was a teenage kid in his basement yeah. uh, drinking Mountain Dew eating Cheetos. Right. And the cognition that it's just not that anymore isn't there. It's way more like the Sopranos than it, <laughs> than it, <laughs> well, than no, it is. That's exactly right. That's you know, exactly and, right. and by the way, like if Tony Soprano worked in a glass office building, <laughs> you know, and ran, you know, Goldman Sachs, like, I mean, it was, it was it, that level of sophistication right. and we don't talk about it that way. We just right. don't. And, and we don't think about it that way. And by the way, our, then our customers don't think about it that way. You know, collectively, the right. end customer doesn't think about it that way. So, so you ask me where I start, I always start with the, like, I want to talk about these things differently. When anybody asks me, how do you talk security? I always say, like, I actually think you should put security into the competitor bucket when you talk to customers. We all do SWOT analysis and we talk about like our, you know, about the, who, who our competition is. Cyber criminals are your our end customers competition because they are there to steal your profits. Right, right. And we, when you, Think about the competitive landscape, Mr. Customer. The, the cyber mafia needs to be one of the competitors you think about because they're just out to steal your money. And if you don't make some moves against that competitor, they will steal your money. Not if, they will. It will happen. It is just a matter of time. <laughs> that, that's actually an awesome way to think about it. That yeah. I, and so I, I, so reframe the problem, right? Like, right. because we, we oftentimes we have all these this discussions about their business and the whole bit. And then we go, oh, and by the way, we have to talk about security. Right. Like, is this and afterthought? I would agree with you. The thing that, that I dislike about the security discussion is that it's grounded in fear, right? And and it's it kind of has a negative spin to it. It's not talking about necessarily cool tech and this cool thing that can help your business in a positive way it's 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 started with a sense of fear and foreboding doom right, right. and it's just kind of not a not a happy fun way to talk about tech you know right and it, yeah as i said i'm reluctant because this like it right. sucks right like right. it's unpleasant i don't right. want to talk about this stuff but if i think about it in a competitive perspective because i also know that i don't have endless resources right i can't i can't I can't deal with every competitive threat equally and I can't 
I can't put all my money against security in, in the security bucket because then I, you know, I don't know, don't make any money. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any money to run the business, right? And it isn't a money generating effort. It is at best a money protection effort. Right. But right. I got to keep my competitors from stealing my money. So I also, so I've like, <laughs> you know, right. so it's just one of the buckets I have to put my resources into. And if I think about them competitively, I think it helps the framing. When when we think about that, so and and we think about reframing the whole security discussion, do you do you see government entities or kind of government getting more involved in the security space? I mean, are they starting to think about it as more of a as a larger threat than maybe yes. they have in the past? What oh, do you see going on with that? Distinctly. Like I and so and look, I, I will will sort of you got to have this government conversation with some openness around, you know, ideas. Uh, I don't look at regulation as a holistically bad thing. Uh -huh. um, and let me start with, and I get teased on killing it all the time because I use this example all the time. But if you and I went into the chemical uh, processing business and we built ourselves a chemical processing plant, the cheapest way to dispose of our waste is to dump it in the river. Right. Super cheap. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but society. What wasn't that was, at one time called Lake Erie? Yeah, exactly. Like, right. Like, <laughs> the, uh, the water that was on fire. Yeah. yeah. In, the, in, in the D.C. area where I live is it's the Anacostia River. Right. Which That's smelled true. bad. Like, I mean, yeah. it's, it literally smelled bad. But we as society have decided that clean drinking water is something we'd like to have. So we put guardrails and say, chemical company, you cannot dispose of your waste by simply dumping it in the river. There is a healthy debate to be had about what does cleanliness mean? How are, how, like, how is this to be disposed? What are the impacts? That's regulation and that's politics. But to just say, oh, all regulation is bad, you're essentially saying, well, I don't want clean water. Right. <laughs> I don't right. want clean air. And so I look at this and I say, okay, the government right now has recognized that we actually have a national security threat by the level of impact that's going on. Just, I don't know, look at Colonial Pipeline, look at solar winds, look at Kaseya, look at, I mean, I, and those are just, I don't know, the three that I pulled off the top of my head, right? Because they're all ones we know. But that's an actual threat to the economy, to the way that we operate right. that needs to be addressed. And there is a minimum bar that we need to talk about that is my equivalent of dumping chemicals into the water that we need to talk about. And, and one of the things may be an idea like maybe we don't allow people to pay ransoms, right? If we squeeze off their money, you that actually ends up making the business less profitable, right? And if we start looking at regulation around financial transactions about that to make penalties, maybe that's one of the ways we do that. Again, healthy debate around the politics of it. And I'm not trying to be political. What I'm just observing is, is we have to have those conversations to figure out the, the, the incentives and the structures. Okay. Your question was, do I think government's waking up? The answer is, oh, yes. Because by the way, last time I checked, I will go forth and protect small businesses is a winning platform for anybody. Right, <laughs> Regardless right. of your political affiliation, it is really easy for governments to go, yes, I'm going to protect our economy. <laughs>